In this next session, I'll be talking about taking existing applications and transforming them to the latest Vaadin platforms. The platforms we'll cover are Vaadin 14 LTS and Vaadin 15. And I'll also say a few words about Internet Explorer and talk a bit about our services. So Vaadin 14 is the most recent LTS or long-term support, but it's important to understand that 14 LTS is continuing to be expanded with new releases. We had 14.1 in December of last year, and next month we're anticipating 14.2. Both of these releases are actually included in the LTS, and they get the same level of support. These new releases can have features that are helpful when migrating from Vaadin 7 and 8. Two key examples are the generic drag and drop and the modeless dialogues. These features can save your developers from having to scout around for third-party workarounds when migrating from 7 and 8. So be sure to keep an eye out on the future release roadmap as the 14 LTS will continue to be expanded. If you're moving from Vaadin 10, be sure to check out the compatibility mode and code conversion tools that are free and that will help get you on Vaadin 14 quicker. Most users we've talked to who have applications on Vaadin 10 have already completed their move to Vaadin 14. So this is a sign that the upgrade from 10 to 14 is relatively painless. If you're still on Vaadin 7 or 8, you're actually in good company. Many organizations we're talking to still have significant workloads on the older GWT generation of the Vaadin framework. Vaadin 14 has added many features on top of Vaadin 10 that help make the migration from 7 and 8 much easier. These include components like tree grid, menu bar, accordion, and number field. It includes features like preserve on refresh annotation and generic drag and drop, and also some pro components like grid pro. And of course, MPR is still available as a shortcut to coexist Vaadin 7 or 8 with Vaadin 14 so that you can run a phased migration. If you have applications that aren't on Vaadin at all, and you're looking to do a migration to web from desktop, say from Swing or JavaFX, then Vaadin 14 is definitely worth checking out. Mobile-first approaches are a trend in the web, but Vaadin 14 brings back to web those productivity features that are important to desktop users and that desktop users have come to rely on. Menu bars and context menus, keyboard shortcuts, tab ordering, they're all there in Vaadin 14. And with Vaadin 14.2, even multi-window applications, or MDI, are easy to build. If you happen to have a large Swing application and you're worried about the risks of a long Big Bang replacement project, if you're worried about code freezes and double maintenance, there's good news for you again. We've tested Vaadin 14 on the default embedded browsers of Swing, SWT, JavaFX, and even Microsoft WPF. And the results are positive. So phased migrations from desktop to web are possible with Vaadin 14 using embedded browsers. And a few words about Vaadin 15 then. So migrating Vaadin 14 to 15 is very easy with little to no transformation being required on the Java side. Of course, you have to bear in mind that when you leave Vaadin 14, you're leaving the LTS. There's good news for folks on Vaadin 7 and 8 looking to start experimenting with client-side TypeScript or Leet Element. MPR is also supported with Vaadin 15. So that gives you a shortcut directly from 7 or 8 all the way to 15 as well. So Vaadin 10 and 14 use web components. Web components are a set of W3C specifications that have been implemented well by the engines in Chrome and Safari. For many years now, IE11 has not been keeping up to date with the latest W3C recommendations, and IE11 has not implemented the web component specifications. So custom elements, HTML templates, HTML imports, Shadow DOM, ES modules, none of these things are available in IE11. So to fix the problem of IE11, the community around web components have created things called polyfills. 
Polyfills are pieces of JavaScript that can emulate whatever standards you're trying to access. And these will work when the browser doesn't. So as Jonas was saying earlier, polyfills work, but because they're JavaScript and not natively implemented in the browser, they are slower. This slowness has been problematic for some of our customers when they absolutely need to support IE 11 users and when they're doing a migration from 7 or 8 to 14. Views with complex layouts or grids with lots of columns tend to have this performance issue the most. So our recommendation would be to avoid using IE 11 if at all possible. But if your users absolutely require it, then test. Simulate the complex views in Vaadin 14 and IE 11. If you find problems, then you need to think about options. One obvious option is to simplify the views. Another option is to take the slow performing views and to wrap them in an MPR legacy container. At runtime then, dynamically show either the V7 or the V14 version, depending on whether the browser is IE 11 or not. Some of our customers call this an access old site feature, and they let the user control if they go with the new or the old version. Finally, we'll discuss some services. So Vaadin offers a number of services through its customer success team that are especially relevant for organizations when they're migrating. The two that we'll look at are the mentor and migration assessment services. Vaadin Mentor is an expert from Vaadin dedicated to your organization for a certain period. This service is most relevant in the migration once the project has got underway. Vaadin Mentor would have expertise similar to that of Vaadin Expert Chat. But Vaadin Mentor is different from Expert Chat in two ways. First, since the Mentor Expert is dedicated and has a longer appointment, they get to understand the migration context of your application and they can provide more tailored advice. And second, it's structured so the mentor has their hands free so they can support your team with actual implementation work. There's a lot that a Vada mentor can do besides just supporting the developers on your team as they get used to new technology. Our customers have used mentor in their migrations to help primarily in technical areas where a deep understanding of the business domain isn't required, such as creating the initial foundation for the new application, reproducing internal abstraction service layers of the current application to improve the reusability of the current code, or creating custom components, which is basically the same thing as the point above, but custom components are concrete, and internal abstraction service layers are abstract. Transforming UI tests. So this is useful if there are automated tests available in the current application, that can be transformed or reused to help test the new application and any UX related activities like styling, creating design systems, and anything that would help give a boost to the visual aspects of the web components. The next service we'll discuss is migration assessments. So migration assessments are different from Mentor in that it runs in a shorter time box duration and at a fixed price. Unlike mentor services, the assessment service would happen before the migration project got underway. The aim of the migration assessment is to produce and deliver insights about the application and its migration to the stakeholders inside your organization. Stakeholders will benefit from these insights as they better understand what options they have and what the consequences would be of choosing the different options. The result is better decision-making with more confidence and better execution. The insights really do apply to all levels of stakeholders in your organization. Senior management is looking for confidence when approving the budgets for the project. Development managers also need to be confident that the right skills are available to complete the project successfully. And the internal developers also need to be confident that if they start transforming the current application code, they're using optimized mappings and best practices. The migration assessment is a fairly short service delivered in two or three weeks. The way we can keep these short but still valuable is through the proprietary tooling we use. We've created a software analysis tool that can take Java sources as input, and the tool will extract all of the dependency information that the application contains. What the tool produces is a large CSV full of data 
that our experts can do big data operations on and find relevant patterns and outliers. There's a four-step process that we follow in migration assessments. It's first to quantify the development and runtime dependencies in the application. It's assessing the impact of the change of platform on these dependencies. It's identifying options wherever these might exist. And finally, it's estimating the effort to transform the application to restore its features. All the insights are shared with the customer in a document form. Uh, these are presented and discussed in a follow-up meeting with the expert. We've completed several of these migration assessments for our customers in the US and in Europe, and the feedback that we've had has been consistently positive. So we'd like to encourage our customers in uh, the APAC region also to take advantage of this. That was uh, everything about our services and different platforms.